I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 5th of September 2022 and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua and today is Monday and an adventurous travel day or really an adventurous public transportation day for me and the family. We started off the morning in Matagalpa. Unfortunately that is not where I'm filming. I'm filming in Leon because we're home. Um, but I had hoped to get up this morning and do filming in Matagalpa but uh, we had to get up uh, after being out not late but a real night out last night and uh, wanted to um, uh, be able to make it to the bus this morning because one of the challenges with public transportation here, which in general is really good, uh, is that there's not a lot of information. There's really nobody you can ask to figure out what's going on with any given public transportation and how to get somewhere. There aren't posted schedules, there's no website, there's no guides. You have to figure out how to get to a bus station or whatever and then once you're there just figure out what to do and there's a lot of just guesswork involved and often the people at the bus station will help you but it's in very fast Spanish and very loud environments with a lot of information you may not understand and that makes it really tough. So we got up this morning at a pretty reasonable time, got up, had breakfast at the hotel because it's included uh, as it generally is here and uh, and got on uh, the road pretty quickly. It was about 9.15. By the time we did everything packed up, everybody showered and did all their things, had breakfast. Um, everything took longer than we were expecting. We actually were up at like 7, 7.15. Um, but by the time they were able to get a taxi, we were ready for a taxi at 8.50, but they weren't able to get one for us until 9.15. And that was already too late. We had missed all of the buses going to Leon from Matagalpa. There's only like two direct interlocal minibuses uh, all day um, and they're at like nine and ten or something like that. The bus was actually there but it was already full and we couldn't get on it. Uh, so that started again another travel adventure for us and a lot of stress for everybody um, but it is pretty easy we got the taxi and they took us down to the um southern terminal if you're going to go uh from Matagalpa to leon it is the south terminal that you get and that's the big one pretty much everything goes from there we uh uh we kicked around a couple different ideas, including taking the interlocals to Managua, doing a transfer, because you have to go into Managua to one terminal, uh, which I don't know that terminal, then get a taxi over to the Uca terminal, then Uca to Leon, which is not too bad, but it's a awful, if you'll check a map, it's a lot of extra distance for sure. So we didn't really want to do that if possible. Uh, and they, they finally talked us into taking the big bus, which everyone is so set against. And I'm like, I don't, I really don't think it's that bad. Uh, so we ended up taking the big bus, the chicken bus, out of uh, Matagalpa. Now, something I do want to point out, Matagalpa actually has a posted schedule. And that's awesome. Like, that is so cool that they have a huge board with all their times for all their buses at different places. I've never seen that anywhere, including in Managua. What, it's so simple, and suddenly you can just look up and go, oh, I see where I can go. What? Like, who? I... I why isn't this everywhere? And this is not one of the biggest cities, so I don't understand. Uh, but so that was really easy. We got on the chicken bus and we're on the road pretty quickly. So actually we did pretty well. Um, what we learned is that you there is no direct bus and looking for one is actually the mistake. It is simply Matagalpa to, uh, to Leon is not a thing. And it's because of just the way the connections and the roads go, it doesn't make sense for that to be a thing. So it's not a big deal that it's not there. It's just you have to know you're asking for the wrong thing. I needed a quieter place to record so I'm over on the steps of La Antigua but now that I'm here I'm realizing this is way way too busy of an intersection and not going to work. We're gonna move on again. Well the light isn't as good but the noise is a lot better. Anyway we got onto the so there, you're looking for the wrong thing with the buses is what we learned and everyone does this. Everyone wants to direct at any cost and there isn't always one and often because it just doesn't make sense it's not a route that makes any sense. So they finally talked us into taking the chicken bus and what they told us was you go to San Isidro and switch buses there and that sounds really complicated. That's the secret, it's not. So once we knew what to do and this is different than we did the other day so we were still learning new things. We got the bus and it took us to San Isidro. That's not a very long bus ride. It's about 30, 35 minutes down to Sabaco and then another 15 minutes maybe to San Isidro. San Isidro is not where they dropped us off the other day. That's in Palma, which is in San Isidro, but it's the in Palma intersection. You go on just a tiny bit farther on the Pan American towards Esteli and you get to San Isidro Terminal or station, I'm not sure. I think it's a station. Estacion uh, San Isidro, uh, has 
mostly buses coming in from Matagalpa and Managua and mostly going on to Esteli. It's a big, dedicated bus station in the middle of nowhere. So when you get there, your buses pull into a completely isolated station, and there's very clear markings that all the buses go on one side going one place, all the buses on the other side are going another, and it's like big, covered area. Like, it's totally organized and easy to use and so simple, and you're not in the hustle and bustle of a market like you are here in Leon or you are in Chinandega. It is quiet and easy easy so easy so we just got off our bus walked through got right onto the leon bus that is waiting there and had to wait probably 10 minutes before it was ready to leave they run every half hour and we were on our way to leon it actually couldn't get much easier than that yes a straight through bus would be easier but this was awfully close um, and if for some reason you needed to use the bathroom or anything you just needed to get out and stretch your legs you have that station in order to do so I do we do not know the bathroom situation there so I'm not recommending that I have no idea but it does exist and that is it is nice to be able to get out of the bus for a minute um, and move about on a long journey it's not really that long I would prefer to go straight through but whatever and it's basically straight you're only going at most half a mile out of the way of a straight path and it's probably not even that so very very efficient uh, if nothing else then we were on our way to Leon, and really the whole ride was not even that hot especially coming down from the mountains the buses are not that warm because you have all that fresh air up in Matagalpa it was 64 degrees last night like it's so nice up there at night and even during the day it just doesn't get that hot as we got towards Leon, you felt the heat creeping up, but you still have all that fresh air on the, on the chicken buses. It's not, it's not a bad ride at all. Now, our second big adventure, though, of the day, this happened um, a long, quite a long way. Uh, Liesl had an emergency, wanted to use the bathroom, but hadn't needed to use it at San Isidro, the long pieces from San Isidro to Leon. And so we kept trying to gauge it as we went, and trying to figure out how long it was gonna take, could she make it that far? And finally, when we got to, and I'm gonna get the name wrong, Mal Payasillo, um, it, it, we made the determination that she could not make it onto Leon and that we had to get off. So we didn't have very much warning, we didn't have any time to think about it, and we've never been to this uh, station before, so we have no idea what the town is like. So it's really kind of guessing where to get off the bus, what to do, and uh, I looked at Dominica and I'm like, do we all get off or just Liesl and I? And she was like, oh, yeah, I think we'd better go on. So Liesl and I just hopped off the bus in the central market in Mal Paisio, and Dominica and Luciana went on to Leon on their own since they had already paid for the bus and were already on the bus. And we just didn't want to make it a bigger thing than it needed to be because what if we had to hike it or take a taxi or something? It was just, we, the fewer people, the less complicated it was going to be. So we jumped out. And I really quickly ran around the market and asked for a bathroom. And the people in the market were great. They guided me to where to go. We got her right into a bathroom. And, uh, and luckily that was not too bad, but the bus could not stay there. It's not allowed to stay where we were. So it had to move on. Dominica talked to the, the bus conductor, not the driver, in, in Spanish, those are the same thing, but the conductor is a separate person in English. The person we would call a conductor, the, the manager of the bus, um, he said, we're not allowed to stay here, but we'll go up to the gas station up the street and wait there. They can catch uh, one of the moto taxis to run them up here and catch them up to us and we can go on from there. She's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. It's so great. But my T-Mobile service died while we were there and I was unable to get messages until it was too late. So I kept working with my phone trying to get service. I kept sending messages saying, I know you're not getting this, but you'll see all these messages as to our status when you do. And by the time my, my service started up again, uh, it was too late and they had already had to move on. But that's okay, we weren't really ready yet anyway. It would have been too long to make them wait, but they really were trying. They put in so much effort for us, it was fantastic. Um, but they did give Dominica all the information that she needed, which was there was another bus coming in 30 minutes. Uh, and that was from the time they dropped us off, not from the time they set it. So it was actually at that point, 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, we just had to wait for that, not a big deal. There was also an interlocal that goes from Alper Paisio to Leon, but we had missed that one as well. They were leaving just minutes after we arrived, so that was not a possibility, but there were a lot of options. So once she was out of the bathroom, actually the, the, other, the next bus was just pulling up. The women in the market knew where we were going, what was going on, and they immediately were like, this is Leon, you need to get on it, and they ushered us right onto the bus, and it cost us like less than two dollars uh, of extra bus fees to get home and no issues at all and uh and we were home safe and sound so it's quite an adventurous day where everything went wrong compared to what we expected but 
honestly, the Nicaraguan uh, public transportation system is so easy and efficient and friendly and safe and cheap that it made the whole thing basically a non-issue once we really did it. And, and really, if I was going to go back to Matagalpa, I might, I might just take the, the chicken buses because that was it's cheaper than the interlocals. It's barely longer and, and there's so many more of them. You know once you're taking one, you're in a system that, yeah, you need to get off and take the next one, 30 minutes. Like, it's that easy. And you know you're going to go to San Isidro and have a, a station instead of waiting at a bus stop on the side of the road. You've got a shelter. Like, it's just, it's easy. I'm really impressed with that. But that was our Monday. Our whole day was pretty much spent getting to the bus station, dealing with the bus station, and all that stuff. So that's unfortunate that it was a very, very busy travel, like actual logistics of travel day. And it's unfortunate that so many things went wrong, but it also gave us a chance to experience so many more different aspects of Nicaraguan travel and how well it could go. It really did go well just as, as much as things could for the things that were happening to us. And I continue to be very impressed with Nicaraguan public transportation, except for the inability to look up when anything is ever, um, so you never have the information ahead of time that you need in order to make critical decisions. So the thing that we really needed is someplace that we could have looked up reliably, because we did ask locals, and they always, this happened to us last week, happened to us again this week, we asked locals, what do we do about, you know, what time do we get on this thing, and the time that they give us is wrong, and by the time we get there, we've missed the thing we were going for. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to cross the road here. That's why I'm very distracted. Um, and that kind of stuff that there's no definitive way to look it up. You always have to ask someone and hope they know and they rarely do. That's a terrible system because very few people do any particular route. Everybody uses the public transportation system. That part's fantastic. It's just universal. But everybody does very specialized paths along it. So one person will be really knowledgeable about how to get to Chenandega, and another person will be really knowledgeable how to get to Managua. But nobody knows more than one or two. And when you want to explore the country, you're using lots and lots of different ones all the time and left kind of guessing until you figure it out yourself. So already, we know more paths than pretty much anyone we know. That's weird that we as foreigners who've only been here for a year and a half are already on the expert side of public transportation in general because we know the chicken buses to many cities now we know the uh interlocals to many cities we know the ishimche uh and the it's called the brony i know a little bit about um we know the international connections we know uh all kinds of stuff that a lot of people are like well i've heard of that but i don't really know or i did it one time and i know this path exists we have a really good idea of the cost the schedules the where they stop to give you food where the bathroom breaks are, how long it's going to take, all those things, how to get dropped off at different places, all that. We've really kind of nailed that down. We're far from the absolute experts, but compared to most people as far as breadth of knowledge of different things, what I don't know at all is how to use and how to figure out where they go the majority of the little tiny um, they're, the, they're in between taxis and uh, shuttles that go around the cities and I'm walking past one right now. I'm going down some cobblestone so it'll take me a second. I'm about to walk past an empty one that is parked and uh, these are what are used inside the cities in many cases and are really just, hola, como esta? Let's bring this around. These right here, it's just a bench seat that you sit in and they drive around the neighborhoods and mostly they take you from the neighborhoods to El Centro and then from there you can catch them out to wherever you need to go. So that's a really cool system and really cheap, um, but I don't know how it works. So that's one that you, you need to know. Every city is different how they work and you really need someone who is local and does it to explain to you exactly the details of it. So at some point I'm going to do that for sure, but I'm not at a point where I've done that yet. Uh, and that will be another whole piece of public transportation. And I'm looking forward to figuring that out because it's going to add a lot to my public transportation repertoire and make it easier for me to do things even further afield than I'm doing currently. And for some of my filming, actually that would be really handy because they're really cheap. So it might be like less than a dollar. I should be able to go, I think it's like 90 cents total to go from here to El Centro and then from El Centro to any barrio. So in theory, I could go to some really far flung barrio for less than a buck. 
uh, and then either film out there and then take a dollar back or walk back from there instead of having to walk all the way there and all the way back, which is often one of the big limitations that I have. It's just so much walking in, a, in order to go anywhere. Uh, so we did all that. We came home and we are now back in Leon where we will be all week. Uh, it was a great adventure in Madagalpa. Man, I love that city. My next city to explore, I think, is going to be Esteli, unless something comes up. Esteli is the only one of the Highland cities that I have been to it, but I've been there extremely little. I need to go and actually spend time. So many people rave about it. Uh, it's many people's favorite cities, and for me never to have spent time there is weird. Uh, so I need to go do that and not have it missing from my my experience uh and then other places that definitely need some attention messiah for sure rivas huigalpa uh and boaca those are probably the biggest things that i need to hit in the relatively near future because they're they're cities that i just don't know very well some i've been to many times like rivas but I've not really spent time there to explore the nightlife and walking around the city and, and haven't done filming for you guys. So, so I really want to do that and, and get a lot more breadth here in Nicaragua um, in, a, in a deeper, in different cities kind of way. And I should mention, it was requested of me to go to Malpaisillo by one of my viewers just like two months ago, probably less than that, probably a month ago, because uh, he he's interested in moving there and wanted some footage to see what it's like. And sorry, I did not have any any time to film while I was there. I got essentially no filming while out and about today because we were dealing with stuff. Uh, so sorry about that. Mostly it would have been shots out of the window of the bus, which is not the best way to get scenery. So I try not to do that more than just a second here or there. Um, and shots in a bus, which I try not to film too much in public transportation because it's kind of obnoxious uh, because they're, they're sort of trapped there with you. So I try to balance that. Travel days like this, very, very hard to get much footage. And my family does not like being on the show, believe it or not. I don't know why, but even my kids who are my kids, right? They don't have my, I wanna be on the show gene, I guess. So that's not something that they normally want to do. It's, it's like pulling teeth to get them on the show. Um, so that we're out doing family activities actually makes it harder to film rather than easier. Uh, but I think I'm going to do some trips to some of these cities relatively soon so that uh, I can get a whole bunch of new footage for you. Because I think this footage from Atagalpa, even as limited as it was for the weekend, is pretty fantastic. I haven't actually seen it yet, right? But uh, knowing what, it, what was going on with walking around and where I was able to go and things we were able to do in the very limited time that I had, I, I think it's really interesting stuff. And I think more of this would be really fantastic for the channel. And I'm really glad we were in Madagalpa this weekend because Madagalpa has been in the international news so much. And the news has been reporting things that are obviously untrue when you see the footage from Madagalpa that is completely fake news uh, coming from around the world. It blows our minds. People watching this channel will send me notes and be like, what do you mean you're out in these places? Like, we're hearing news. This is what we're seeing is news from these places. And we're like, what are you talking about? This is not at all what's going on here. It's wild. So uh, glad that we were able to be in Madagalpa and show that because what a great city. And yesterday, I got cut short and I, I will have gone back and fixed yesterday's video and mentioned it, but I ran into a new YouTuber, Karen, who lives in Madagalpa. She does not have a show up yet, but when she does, I'm sure we'll be linking it here. Uh, she is working on Nicaraguan content from Madagalpa. That is her new thing. And uh, she ran into me on the street, so that was really cool as well. And she had the same experience. She's like, I live here and we keep seeing this news and you look out the window and it's a completely different world than what they're claiming on the news. Like, how can the news be so fake? And everybody believes it, everybody everywhere. And if you look at anything coming out of Nicaragua, it's like, well, um, clearly in real time video, that's not what's happening. It's very frustrating. This, yeah, I'm actually recording this in real time. I've only been here, it is 5.30 now. We got back here. Oh, I walked away from here because of the loudspeaker and now it's back again. I'm gonna head back over to the monument to wrap up the day's recording um the uh it's 5 30 now we only got here at about 2 30 so we've been back for about three hours working on uploading the videos from the weekend because none of them are uploaded yet uh and trying to get some editing done because i'm i'm obviously very backlogged as it will always happen when i'm traveling um and this evening i think pretty much it's going to be a, a pretty 
a chill evening just hanging out at the house with the kids. The dogs really missed us. We have a new housekeeper who started today. We finally decided we just need a full time like maid. Like so she starts at six. Uh, I'm sorry, starts at 10, goes to six uh, and does an entire eight hour day, six days a week uh, and is going to clean everything. Obviously, that's what a maid does, um, but also is going to do our grocery shopping and is going to do our um, a lot of the cooking and stuff and walking the dogs things that we really, really need. We don't need that much cleaning, really. It's all the other stuff. Oh, the kids need a snack and they can't reach the, the cupboard or whatever. And every time they need that, I have to drop what I'm doing, get off of a call, run over from my office, interrupt what I'm working on, do this thing. And often they have to wait an hour or two for me to do that because I have meetings or I'm out filming and I can't drop what I'm doing. I don't know that they're looking for me until that thing's over. And so it's so much of them waiting and so much of me being interrupted that we just need someone to handle those things. So she started today and uh, we're, we're hoping that that works out really well. The bell is starting, that is my signal to go. Please remember to like, subscribe, share with your friends, tell people about the channel, leave your comments and questions below and uh, feel free to buy me a coffee if you like this content because it's the only way that I get sponsored. Thanks for joining me. I will see you all tomorrow.